Okay, welcome to the third lecture, and uh, the topic for today is that we're going to talk about uh, more basic concepts uh, that is formulated given an in inner product, uh, not, sorry, topological space. Okay, and uh, so the title is the closed sets limit points T1 and T2 spaces. So we're just going to introduce uh, every one of them. Okay, so the definition is that given topological space, a subset of X that is closed, if the complement, if the complement is open. Okay, so you're closed if your complement is open. So here are some examples of closed sets. This set in R is closed, right? Because this is the complement, right? It is an open set. And now we consider the space Y subset of R in subspace topology, okay? So this space is open in Y because it is intersection of open in R intersect with Y. And it's also 2, 3 is also open in Y because, right? But 0, 1, and 2, 3 are complements of each other in Y, right? The complement of each other in Y. So, <coughs> 0, 1, 2, 3, they're also closed in Y, right? And so here's a theorem is that, so given a topological space, empty sets and the entire space are closed, arbitrary intersection of closed sets are closed, and finite union of closed sets are closed. And all of this set is very similar to the, to the open sets, right? If we just reverse them, right? Arbitrary union of open sets are open finite intersection of open sets are open right so here the for closed sets we just swap them and the proof is really easy it's just by de morgan's law so i just skipped it okay so we've done open sets and subspace but what about closed sets and subspace right so given the subspace a set a is closed and y before that we have to say that a is a subset of y Right, so we say A is closed in Y if and only if A is equal to C intersect of Y with some C closed in X. Yes, if and only if this is really the same as the, uh, the open sets, right? A is closed in Y if and only if A is a closed set intersect with Y. So I, I agree with the, the open sets. Okay, so for this direction, for this direction, suppose this and C is closed in X, right? So X minus C is open in X. So this is open in Y, if you intersect with Y. Now, A is equal to C intersect with Y, and X minus C intersect with Y is equal to Y minus A. So here's the equality, so I will prove this equality. So if, if it's element y is in this set, then y is in big y, and y is in not in c. Right? x minus it, y is not in c. So if it's not in c, then it's not in c intersect y, right? Because c intersect y is a subset of c. If you're not in c, then you're also not in here, right? So y is in y, and y is in x minus this set, right? So and is the intersection, so y is in y, intersect with this. But x minus uh, c intersect y is x, uh, x minus a, right? x minus a. So x minus a intersect y is by definition equal to y minus a, right? This is just a definition. So y minus a is the intersection y intersect with x minus a. And this is the set a precisely. Right? Okay. So now, if this element is in y minus a, then you're in y, and you're not in a. Right? a is just y intersect c. So, 
you're not in line intersect C. So here is by the Morgan's law, right? Why is in Y and Y is in uh this, right? Because uh Y is in my C complement, which is Y complement union with C complement. This is the Morgan's law. So you're right here and here and here. So intersect them, right? End them by distributive property, right? We can use the distributive property of sets gives this, this gives you the empty set, so y this, which is equal to y intersect. Uh, yes, y intersect minus c. Right? So they are equal, which means that a is closed in y. Right? Because y minus a is equal to set, but this set is open in y. So y minus a is open in y, so a is closed in y, right? So we have talked about the relative, relativeness of sets. Okay, so now this direction done, we're gonna show this direction, and a is closed on y, right? So we wanna show that a is equal to some intersection, uh, closer to the x with y. It's closed on y, so y minus a open in y, so we can do this, right, where u is open in x, and a is equal to y intersect x minus u. So notice this proof is all about uh, set theory, right? So y minus a is equal to this, so y minus a is equal to y intersect x minus a, this is by the definition, right, if you think about it, and u... <sighs> This is equal to u intersect y. Notice that they both intersect y, right? So x minus a should be equal to u, right? Right? So x minus a equal to u, that by definition, their a and u are complements of each other. So a is equal to x minus u. But a is a subset of y. So a is equal to a intersect of y, right? Which is equal to this intersect y, right? So a is equal to y intersect x minus u. A is equal to y intersect x minus u. U is open in x. X minus u is closed in x. A is equal to y intersect c, where c is closed in x. Right. So this is really it about this theorem. It's all about uh, basic set theory. And uh, okay, so I'm gonna give more definition. We say that given topolo topological space, we say the interior of the set A is the union of all open sets that are contained in A. Okay, so given X a topological space, interior A is to find the union of all U that is contained in A and U is open. <laughs> and the closure of A is defined as the intersection of all sets that contains A and is closed. <laughs> We're free to do so because interior is open and enclosure is closed because arbitrary intersection is closed, arbitrary union is open. Right? So we have this uh, obvious containment relation. Right? So in terms of subspace topology, right? in terms of, for those definition, in terms of subspace topology, and uh, we say y is a subset of x and uh, a is contained in y. We denote this set as the closure of a and x. Okay. This we need to talk about the, the topology differently, right? So a bar is the closure of a and x. But the closure of a and y right, is equal to closure of a intersect with y. So this is the statement of the theorem. Okay. So we notice that we say that, okay, the closure of a. And this topology is the set of all set that contains anything that is closed, closed in this topology, right? But what if the closure of A and Y? Then we see that it's closed in like the subspace topology induced by Y, right? It is different story, right? So we have to prove that they're equal, right? We have to prove that this obvious, I mean, this intuitive equality holds. And to show that, let's look at the proof. Okay, so let B be the closure of A and Y. Okay, just uh, denote this. 
We know that a bar is close in x. So a bar intersect y is close in y. But a is contained in a bar intersect y. But a is contained in a bar, a is contained in y, so a is contained in both. A is contained in both, and this is close in y, so by definition, right, b should be contained in that because b is the smallest closed set that contains it. Uh, uh, a closed set of y that contains a. It's also b is closed in y, so b is equal to this, right? This, where c is closed in x. This is by our above theorem, right? A is contained in b, right? And b is equal to c intersect y, so a is contained in c, right? Contained in c. A is contained in c. <coughs> C is closed in X. A is contained in C. So A bar is contained in C. So A bar intersect Y is contained in C intersect Y, which is equal to B. So A bar intersect Y is contained in B. B is contained in this. A bar is Y is contained in B. So they're equal. Right? Okay? So this is really just all set theory. And we're going to some talk about some characterization of A bar with the basis. So here's a terminology or some like words terminology. We say u is a neighborhood of A if A is contained in U and U is open. Okay, so this is, this is we say the open uh, the neighborhood. <laughs> so given the topological space A contained in X, we observe that not really, but we we characterize that X is in the closure. If X is in closure, if it only if Sorry, here's a typo here, it should be x. x is in the closure if and only for any neighborhood you have your x, it intersect with a. Right? Your a is not empty, it intersect with a. And for, second of all, if the topology is generated by a basis, then we can change this to what to any basis element. It's a neighborhood, we say basis. Basis element that in the same way it gives you non empty set. Okay, so mainly we have to prove A and B follows by A, right? You can you can just see that okay, given A, let's prove B and you see that B is not really that hard. So let's just prove A. For A, we just use contrapositive. Okay. It's easy to use contrapositive. So, so we want to show, we want to show this first, right? So, not this implies not this, gives you this implies this. So this direction, okay? X not in the closure, which means that you're in a complement of the closure, and this is an open set, and they're uh, intersect with empty, right? It gives you empty intersection. So this is a neighborhood of X, right? X is a neighborhood, uh, this neighborhood of X, so shy and check A gives you every set, right? They exist in, right? They exist in neighborhood of X such that it gives you empty set. So if you're not in a closure, then there exists a neighborhood, right? Because this is open, right? A is closed, so this is open. And so it's like, like A gives you empty. Now, conversely, if there exists a neighborhood such that it's like A gives you empty, then A is in the complement, right? A is in the complement of um, X minus U, and X minus U is closed, right? From here, X minus U is closed and it contains A, so we have this, and X is in U, so x is not in u, so x is not in a bar. x is not in a bar. So so x is not in a bar, right? So this equivalence is established. <laughs> For part b, basis elements are open, right? So by part a, uh, this direction is this direction is done, right? <laughs> basis element basis elements are what uh, are open, so. And uh, if all bases contains x intersects a, so does the neighborhood of x, right? Again, right? 
who lives in the neighborhood of X. So given that part A, X is an A bar. Right? Because, okay, if you want to show this, right? It's like, okay, for neighborhood of X, U, right? Neighborhood like X is in U, right? We know that by the definition of the topology generated by a basis, we know that there is a basis B, right? Such that X and B contain in U. But we know that B intersect A is not open, uh, sorry, is not empty. And this is containing U intersect A. Right, so U intersect A is not empty, right? So this gives this, and this gives this, right? precisely the same. So that is the logic chain. Okay, so we're gonna talk about more characterization of A bar with limit points. So, we the definition of limit point is that okay, let's give it a topological space and a subset of X. We call the derived set of A, where the set of all limit points of A is that X is in this, where we we define the derived set of A is that for any neighborhood of A, it intersect with A minus X is not empty. So it intersect with A other than X. That's called the limit points. Okay. So set of limit points we call this set of limit points of a and x okay in this topology okay we always have to be we always should be clear about which topology we're in right so this we're given in topology so we talk about this topology in the future, we might talk about, oh, the subspace topology, the limit points in the subspace topology, instead of the original topology that is given, right? You have to be careful. Here's the definition, okay? And here's the theorem that a bar root are really just a union with a prime, the derived set. Well, the proof is really easy. If you're in here, if you're in A, then we're done. If we're not in A, Right, then we know that every right every neighborhood intersect with A, but X is not in A, so intersect with a point that is other than A. So so we good. So conversely, so this is done. Now conversely, if you're in an A, then you're in A bar, right? No no problem. And if you're in A prime, then uh, again by definition in above theorem, you're in A bar. Right, it's like every neighborhood in X. Right. Okay. A is closed if and only if it contains all its limit points. If it's closed, A is equal to A bar is equal to A union A prime. So A prime is in A. Now, if A prime is equal uh, containing A, A prime union is A is equal to A bar, which is also contained in A. So A is closed. So that's everything for the limit points. All right. All right. So limit point, you observe that okay from calculus. This really is why is it called limit point, right? Why is it called limit point? It's like okay for any neighborhood of A, right? It intersect A some in some point other than X. This can like we can use this to describe the the convergence of sequences, right? And but in some more general form in topological spaces, and here's the definition of a converging series, a sequence. So, given a topological space and given a sequence in X, right? We see that X n converges to a point X if, for any neighborhood U of X, there exists a natural number n such that, for n greater than n, X n should all be in this U. 
So here's the problem. We we talk about convergence series and convergence sequences in R, right? And R or in R n, right? Or C, right? We talk about convergence series in that, and we cannot talk about convergence without a topology, right? So in R, you might see that our oh, our topology is really just the standard topology A B, right? For any neighborhood of X, right? For and for any like X, for any of X, we can call all of them. For any smaller neighborhood, right? We talk about this uh, the standard topology. So we cannot talk about convergence without giving a topology. Never. Okay. And in calculus, single points are closed, and sequences converges to at most one point, right? This is in calculus, single points, and the Euclidean space. But what about in general? Consider this topological space. The open sets are B, AB, and AC. B is not closed because AC is not open. Oh, a, a, B, and BC. AC, the set, the complement is AC, right? But AC is not open, right? Single points are not closed. And our single points are closed. Say zero, zero is closed, right? Because its complement is what? This union with this, right? It's open set, right? But here, single point is not closed because <laughs> AC is not open. It's arbitrary to body with space, right? And also the sequence B, 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 it converges to B, it converges to A, B, and also converges to B, C, right? By the definition of convergence, right? For for the neighborhood A, B, right, it is always in this neighborhood. For the neighborhood B, it is always in the neighborhood, and also for the neighborhood A, C, is also always in this neighborhood. So it converges to three different points. Well, such spaces are not interesting. Right? Sequences converges to three points, multiple points, instead of just one point. It is such spaces are like it is not interesting in general. So we're gonna make some restriction, such that spaces that does not have this property, we give them a certain name. Is you call T two space or Hall source space? Hall source space. Okay. So given topological space, X is a T one space if finite sets are closed. T two space, or we call the Hall source space, if for any X y and X, there is a U neighborhood of X V neighborhood of Y such that there are disjoint. So it's like separating them, right? Given X and Y, find U and find a V. So that they're disjoint. Okay. T2 implies T1. Why? It suffice, suffices to show that single points are closed, right? Because the final union of closed sets is closed. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, final union of closed sets are closed. So just consider the singleton set, single point set. Now, if Y is not equal to X naught, then we because it's hollow store, so we can pick a neighborhood of Y such that it is disjoint with X naught. Which means that exists a neighborhood such that it is disjoint with x naught, which means that you are not in the closure. So from now we see that the closure of x naught is equal to x naught itself, which is a closed set. Okay, so t two implies t one. Other remark is that t one does not imply t two. So t two is strictly stronger than t one. T two implies t one, but t one does not imply t two. Why? Because we consider the space R with cofinite topology, such that it's open if the uh, if the uh, if the complement is finite. So this is indeed a topology. I'll leave for you to check it. So A is finite, right? Given set A is finite, right? Given finite set. And uh, A is equal to A complement complement. So A complement is open. A complement is open because A complement compl A complement the complement is equal to A. A is finite. So A complement is open, which means that A is closed. So here finite sets are closed, but it is not a hostile space because given point zero one, 
fixed 2.01. We have all the zeros in U, one is in V, such that there's this join and they're open, right? Then U it's disjoint with V. So V is in the in the complement of U. A V is in the complement of U. U is open, so this is finite. This is a finite set, you're a subset of a finite set, so V is a finite. But V is open, so R minus V is also finite. So R is a union of V and R minus V. So R is a union of finite set with a finite set. So R is a finite set. It's funny, right? So T1 does not imply T2, right? Just for any points A, B, right? I just pick zero, one. It doesn't matter at all, right? So here's a theorem that the most important thing for a T1 space is that given the A is an X, then X is an X is a limit point of A if and only for any neighborhood it intersects with the infinite set. For any neighborhood of X, intersection is infinite given that x is a t1 space. Okay, so um, um, this direction is obvious, right? Yes. Because it, it's infinite set, so other than x, right, we still have sets because it's an infinite set. Like if I'm on one, it's like infinite. something like this, right? Okay, so for this direction, um, suppose for a contradiction that intersection is finite, then a minus x right is a finite set. Okay, now you intersect with this, right? We intersect u with this, right? Because this is closed, right? So the complement of this is open. So x minus this intersect with u is disjoint with a minus x. Wow because u intersect this, intersect a minus x, but u intersect a minus x is this, right? So u intersect a minus x gets this. So it's really just this intersect with this. It's an open set, uh, sorry, it's an empty set. This intersect with this is empty set, <laughs> right? So you're not in the closure. Sorry, you're not in the um, you're not in the limit point. Okay. So here's this here's a theorem that T two spaces the sequences converge to at most one point. I'll leave for you to check. Okay. And uh, here's the last thing I'll talk about for Hausdorff spaces is that given a linear order set X with order topology is Hausdorff. Product of Hausdorff is Hausdorff, essentially a Hausdorff is Hausdorff. Okay? For order set, right, we just talk about it as why is a Hausdorff? Because if there's a point between them, then we have this. Otherwise, just consider this. For product topology, if x and y is both Hausdorff, given x1, y1 not equal to x2, y2, then we must have either x1 not equal x2 or y1 not equal y2. So if x1 is not equal x2, then x is Hausdorff, right? So this is the desired pair, right? Because their intersection gives you empty, right? And uh, yeah, similarly for this. So subspace topology, if y is a subset of x, x, y, and y, such that x not equal to y, right? Sorry. Wait, did I? write down x not equal to y at the beginning. Oh my god. My apology. X not equal to y. Okay. So y associate of x, x, y, and y, then uh, we can find a pair in this, and we intersect with y is another pair in the subspace. It's really just that easy. It's really just that easy. Okay?
So this is everything for today. Talk about more definitions and next time we're gonna talk about continuous functions and see you guys.